hey guys and welcome back to another video today is a react video by void dude but before we get into that let me just break down um where i'm at with everything and where everything is at so uh star citizens just in a really stale state we're in that waiting period which is a period we've probably been in for 12 years in all seriousness but um we're kind of in between waiting for them to stabilize a patch and then we're also trying to they're also trying to get 4.0 out the door and stuff like that right so it's the uh calm before the storm because we got citizen con uh you know however many months out so big things are coming but they're definitely not here right now master modes uh requires iteration uh and some pretty significant changes and we're waiting on those to come also uh so it's just difficult to be a content creator right a lot of there's a lack of really good debatable conversational videos too um so struggling to find stuff to do stuff to record uh and etc etc so um there's also a couple other games on the horizon i'm looking at that might interest you guys you know it may or may not all good if it doesn't but we got uh dune awakening this is like a pvp sandbox open world mmo with base building uh it's also got combined arms like features to it like vehicles flight ground you know and stuff like that so that could be really interesting when that comes out we don't know but i'd like to start doing some react videos to that to uh ashes of creation which is basically fucking star citizen with dragons yeah so uh i'm very interested in that i'm not certain on either of them but uh i definitely want to start doing my research and homework so that might include some react videos i don't care i'll spice it up i don't don't mind uh what it does so you know stay tuned for that maybe that'll get me by this uh dry period of star citizen second um yeah like you know that's a lot of the recent content i've done has been combat and org based but that well has dried up not much action in the pu not much incentive you guys know um stuff like that make sure you guys follow my stream on twitch too like i'd say a lot of my content creations happening on twitch right now uh despite i want it to be on youtube more because i enjoy reading through the comments and stuff and you know waking up and looking at that jazz so you know hopefully i'll get uh some more videos churned out soon with that being said uh i think it's time we get on with the video so the video is titled star citizen will be a huge grind but for what it's by void dude cool guy i've watched a couple of his videos off stream i've seen him in salty mike's uh salty mike's channel and stuff he seems pretty based but um let's figure out what he thinks about the grind i know what clip this is too this is from scl uh i posted this i think on twitter but really was happy to hear them say that this it really validates what i want from the game and to be on the same page as the developers with that's pretty rewarding of a feeling uh let's see don't Lower mission rewards and higher prices mean grind? Do we want grind? 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 When we were younger, and by we I mean you and you, we would load our PCs into a car. It's so funny that, like, that's the exact same age demographic as my viewers, so... I guess we're all a bit over the hill, boys. And head over to our friend's parents' garage, plug them into this thing, and spend just about every hour of every weekend spitting the most juvenile degenerate trash talk you've ever heard while burning away countless hours playing multiplayer games. But why though? Why was this the way that we decided to spend our endless amounts of youthful free time when we could have totally been out kicking sports balls, investing in our educations for a better future, or rizzing bi- among all the incredible titles from the good old days, the flavor of any given good old day was usually some kind of shooter, like Counter-Strike. But every now and then, someone- Goldeneye. Goldeneye for me. ...would get bold and we'd try something new. I don't know, let's go with Diablo 2. While everyone pretty much loved landing Diablo 2 and after plowing through our 8 trillionth demon, a friend who probably just wanted to play more Counter-Strike asked an absolutely insane question. Dude, what's the point of this game? What did he mean? It was simple. The point was to kill demons. But why kill the demons? To get levels and items and power. Okay, but why? So we can kill more demons. This game's a grind, dude. 
Obviously, the guys who wanted to play Diablo 2 were just shit at competitive FPS, and the FPS players were just too illiterate to enjoy an ARPG. But this all ultimately boiled down to some questions, like what the fuck is even a grind? Is grinding a grind if it's fun? Does the reason for a grind matter? Is the act of playing a game essentially a grind? Back in those days, we played games because we had fun playing the games. We were young, unjaded, and everything was awesome. However, with the insane growth and popularization of the gaming industry over the last two and a half decades, modern game enjoyers have found more reasons to play games, and because it's fun, surprisingly isn't always one of them. For example, if you played good old World of Warcraft back in the day, God, did more than that. Played lived and breathed World of Warcraft for like 15 years. There would have inevitably have come a point where you've spent so much time in a specific raid, week after week, gearing up your entire guild in preparation for the next raid. No one is having fun anymore, they're just grinding. They're doing something that has become unfun now to have fun later. Many games have grinds, both good or bad, but the most important consideration for most players is probably going to be the reason for the grind. In a given game, you might need to grind levels to gain power to make an encounter easier i was waiting for him to say the power word so the thing about it is like we don't even know what power looks like in star citizen right like there's this huge issue of you can buy every ship in the pledge store yeah every single ship you can get an upgrade that makes a tiny difference to one ship but the rest of them can all be bought on the store yeah so if spaceships aren't going to be the way you power accumulate, then it's going to have to be the components, which is like the inevitable income uh, outcome here, sorry. If a ship is to become like the most of its potential, it's going to need serious components. Now, the problem is, is if we didn't want to get away from the stigma that this game is pay to win, then the game needs to have like power to accumulate that is outside of the scope of these uh, USD, like the, the storefront, right? So to what percentage does components increase your power, right? Like if you say get rare components, craft rare components, whatever, it should at least make your ship twice as powerful. Otherwise, there's always going to be that argument that Star Citizen's pay to win. And I don't understand why we don't know what this is going to look like already and to why we're not there yet like components are very stale they've always been very stale and uh they've only made slight differences and it's uh kind of frustrating that we're still here and we still have nothing to progress towards right now in every mmo in every game everybody is working straight to accumulating power literally every person that is playing the game is just trying to look for a means to an end which the end being power which is like gear yeah so what does that look like in star citizen um and you have to compare it to other games now i know people get so mad at me when i talk about tarkov but tarkov is kind of what's reflecting the economy in star citizen yeah and look it's not that deep guys you don't have to correct me here but where I'm going at this is you have armor, you equip armor and weapons that you buy from the store. These armor and weapons aren't like legendary fit and uh, or anything like that, at least not yet. And when you die, you drop your gear. That is the plan. I know that there's this insurance policy thing where they want to return subscriber gear to people, um, but you lose your stuff on death. Yeah. So in that aspect, you can compare it to, you know, the likes of EVE Online and Tarkov, really. Um, which leads into the whole progression argument I'm sure he's going to get to. But power is going to be, you know, it's probably going to get gatekept by, like, reputation systems and availability to buy or craft or equip the best equipment. Um, and so it'll be similar to, like, the Tarkov loop in that essence. But that's the problem, right, is, like, we just have no understanding of what power is going to look like if you take the store out of it. And I, I'm completely understanding that we need the store to pay for the game. The thousand employees working on this game in 242 were paid for, for ships. But 
the game's got to grow beyond just buying ships. And I don't understand why they haven't gotten there already. It's like the, the most important argument that you have for anyone that comes to Star Citizen, the, one of the first questions they're going to ask is, is this game pay to win? The answer is, hell yeah, it is. And it shouldn't be. The people that are paying for these ships, we don't expect it to be pay to win. We don't want it necessarily to be pay to win. Um, and people want it back, and I can understand that. But we also want the, it to be a MMO, not like Star Atlas NFT store, right? So I don't understand why we're not there yet. And it feels like we haven't even taken a single step towards it. So what's power going to look like? Let me know. Um, or you might need to grind to gain access to new content, or you might need to grind because you want a specific item drop or resource, meaning your own reasons for a grind could be nonsensical and personal. Like how I'm busy with a second playthrough of Elden Ring and for some plays Elden Ring based. The reason I'm grinding the stupid f***ing mad pumpkin head because he can drop a flail that I want. Is the flail good? No, but I want it. He won't drop it though and I'm not sure what's wrong with me. Whatever the case may be, it's usually the game's mechanics, features and developers' intentions that dictate the quality of the grind. But the reason for the grind itself determines if players will stick it out, and the reason for the grind could be anything. Now we can circle back to Star Citizen because this video was largely inspired by the Astro Pub's tweet. <clears throat> uh, I think I retweeted this one. Was talking about this last night on stream. I don't think people realize even now that Star Citizen is an MMO. You'll have to play 10,000 or 100,000 hours to get an Idris in game. Handsome. I think they're a little unaware of just exactly how many hours 10,000 is. Viewer, let's not focus on my amazing Astro Pub impersonation or the specific and absolutely batshit and say numbers he's used to make his point, because his point still stands. Do we want grind? Yes. Here we go, Kawaku. Doesn't type enough in my Discord, especially with uh, how important I think his job role is. We, <laughs> we want an MMO. We want, we want game pay, we want opportunity, we want years of Star Citizen. We don't want 40 to 60 hours, I got an 890 jump, I'm done. It is effort versus reward, right? The the, the grind is a part of the effort and your reward is, is how an item makes you feel. Now I'm... Yeah, and that's the thing, right? It's like we still don't know, like, what grinds do we have in Star Citizen right now? We've got a reputation grind to unlock deeper bounties. Um, but that's not compelling. Um, and I don't know where people would rate just doing the bounty hunter loop at, but you know, I don't think it's uh, compelling to do. And then you look at the other grinds, you know, like outfitting mining ships or cargo hauling, stuff like that. So the problem is, is we don't even know the destination that we're grinding towards. Like, what's the final product of success, like, supposed to look like in Star Citizen? How do you describe, like, what, someone tell me, what is success? What does winning Star Citizen look like? Does it mean that your ships are more powerful? Is it trying to uh, build a base of your own and have, you know, really great equipment that runs that base? For example, the uh mining you know attachment to bases the um you know the hubs and stuff is this is end game end content outfitting your base is it getting capital ships under your belt is it getting really great components for your ships to the point that they're extremely powerful is it just building up a huge account when it comes to uh uec like what's the the final destination if we're doing like we lack progression but what are we progressing towards yeah um and those are two of the questions that like we're which you could also compare like grinding is progression in a sense right like but what are you grinding and progressing towards and what does that grind progression look like and that's the problem is like this game it keeps going wider and wider and wider and there's all these things to do, but it's still, you know, an inch deep. It's miles and miles wide, but it's a puddle when it comes to the depth. And 
The problem is, is they need to start developing some depth to the game, um, which, you know, you can do it so many ways. Like Tarkov, you know, if you look at the progression and the leveling of Tarkov, it's like you've got, you know, reputation levels that get unlocked that allow purchasing of more equipment, stuff like that. Right now, you can buy all the equipment anywhere you want. No problem. The best thing they did was take away the rail guns and the FS9s and the best weapons, but then they just made them immediately purchasable in Pyro. So it's like the game can't just be always ease. Yeah, otherwise there's nothing to grind and it's not worth getting into these reputation systems and stuff anyways. So what does progression look like? What does grinding look like? What does the final destination look like? And why does it feel like we're nowhere closer to that? You know, we've got a suite of missions. We have these um, server-wide events. We have all this, you know, like systems in place, like mining, salvaging, uh, you know, like refueling. But <laughs> to what end? And for what reason? You know, reason. I'm not actually a huge fan of the word grind. To me, grinding is using the mechanics and features of a game in a repetitive fashion at a specific location to accomplish a goal. And what is using the mechanics and features of the game repetitively? That's just playing the f***ing game, but more. For me at least, it only becomes a grind if those mechanics and features are bad or unfun when performed in this repetitive manner. That being said, in my opinion, a game becomes a bad grind when you are forced to participate in repetitive and bland content, not necessarily gameplay in a restrictive time frame that's arbitrarily determined by the developer with little or no freedom to alter your speed or efficiency toward accomplishing whatever awaits you at the end of the so-called grind. What's far more exciting to me, and this is why I believe Star Citizen has great potential as an actual game, is if a title provides opportunities to to step outside the predetermined rate of progress or the grind, whatever that might be, and receive an impactful spike in the reward or progression itself if the game allows you to take risks. This is fun. Let's yeah, risk is fun, right? It's like there's a clip of uh, Summit 1G playing and like within the first week of the game, like he starts going back and forth negatively with his chat, complaining about backers who are risk adverse. He's like, and he's explaining like, why doesn't the star citizen community enjoy risk? Like that's one of the best things out of a game. It's like, you know, it's like that gambling aspect, doubling down, you know, that it requires uh, a lot of loss to have like great success. Yeah. Um, to have a lot of fun, you, there has to be painful moments to it too. And that's okay if the balance is good, right? Like I'm not saying every experience should be negative, but there should be losing so that you can feel dopamine when you're winning. Risk versus reward, baby. We need more of it play out an imaginary example here so bear with me. In a typical theme park MMO, let's say your goal is to make a million gold. It could be to make the game easier to buy better equipment or to prepare for tackling harder content later in the game. Or it could be a main story quest requirement for progress. Well, you want to do this optimally because you're an epic gamer, so you would probably need to get to max level first and the act of getting to max level itself is going to be one of two things. Maybe it's a dull grind because the content sucks or mechanically speaking the gameplay you endure while on your journey to max level just isn't good or well designed. In which case you're probably playing one of those games that only gets good at max level. Which I mean why the f*** are you even playing this game in the first place? The thing is too is like what is max level or what is like what does it look like in this game? And if you to compare it to like I wouldn't say EVE Online necessarily but like Tarkov is it like when there is reputations to unlock, does that gatekeep purchases that can be made? Like, give an example, upgraded components for the uh, Hawk, the Anvil Hawk, if you're bounty hunters, uh, you know, like upgrades to the Hawk for the bounty hunting ship, you know, taser weapons, like handcuffs, like... I don't know, um, like a jail cell that can be installed into your cutlass. Is there going to be segments of power or progression or the economy gate kept by reputations? The question, the answer for me would be hell yeah. Like everything shouldn't be within arm's reach all the time. And that's how Tarkov does it, right? Like if you want uh, to 
unlock certain types of weapons from certain type of manufacturers then you have to grind reputation with the trader that's going to make that available so it justifies the grind so to speak and i think a good grind to answer void's question void dude's question is a grind is great if you don't realize it's happening so much so if you're like passively earning this reputation through doing fun missions and stuff like that that it doesn't feel bad but it should exist the reputation shouldn't come to you freely um and it should be rewarding to have yeah um you do want these players to like work for power uh just depends on how bad it how much does it feel like it's work uh how fun is it and how compelling is the reward at the end of each tunnel or option two, it's not a grind because the act of playing the game to get to max level is a series of interesting and fun gameplay loops, quests, mechanics, and features. This series of things to do in the game are repeated on your journey to maximum level, but- I love how in the video, like, for the, uh, for the B-roll, it's just Star Citizen jank. Like, this guy's teleporting off his chair, like, off his- pilot seat now he's outside of the ship he's glitching through walls and stuff <laughs> like at least the b-roll's authentic with a well thought out ebb and flow that contrasts with what would otherwise be constituted as a grind or you know it's just a good game so you go through this process of experiencing and playing the game, and then once you've reached max level, in order to achieve our goal of reaching 1 million gold, chances are, because this example is a classic theme park MMO, you'll probably need to participate in the- I know he keeps hitting on the theme park, but this is something I've been thinking of lately. I never had a, uh, you know, horse in the race when it came to people use to, like complaining and arguing against the theme rock theme park route that CRG been moving towards, but I'm starting to like see eye to eye with them. I don't like the server wide events. How many times does Orison get sieged before something actually happens? Like the immersion is broken so heavily when it comes to siege of Orison because it's like, oh, a siege gets every quarter siege Orison gets sieged. So, and don't worry, nothing happens. You just have to wait till the event's over. Like immediately when this happens we all know okay we're in it's the theme park ride you know that's it it's just an event you know like and like i don't want to know about an event like it should happen organically like a good example is say if you're in the crusader portion of the system in stanton and you do a ton of nine tails missions that moves the nine tails slider and then that starts the invasion process and then once siege of Orison happens if the siege is successful and you know some quota doesn't get matched uh, or met sorry then Orison is closed off for a month or two you know like just stuff like that like it should actually have an impact this shit should happen organically and it shouldn't happen at just these fixed locations for example like Xenothreat constantly attacking Jericho every time with an Idris doing the same strategy every time it's a theme park ride yeah like and you know the ride nothing is happening unexpectedly unexpectedly and it's always to the script. So my point being, I don't think the script should be controlled. It should be in the player's hands and it should sway with the player's decisions or the outcomes of what happens. So I don't like it. Like, I feel like it's extremely immersive breaking. It makes the game feel arcadey. It makes me feel like kind of dumb. It's like, how interested do you expect me to be or like most of us orison gets sieged we don't care anymore it's not a big deal it doesn't even hold any weight we're just like oh it's another event right like so i don't like it i like um ccp eve online's the development approach when it comes to this stuff they give the players the tools in the sandbox to create the narrative and story and they just profit and i'll give the players what they need to make that happen like big wars happen stuff like this and if you want something significant to happen in your game and for people to be extremely compelled it can't just be according to the script every time it doesn't need to be developers that are making the law you can leave it up to the players and what happens there and there can be like a you know a story in the background but it should be i think second to the players Whereas with CIG, it feels like there's a lot of hand-holding 
we're kind of being put on a narrow path of you know these are the enemies of stanton you know and stuff like that so i'm very against the theme park aspects of the game that seem to be increasing how many times can we do the same mission which is the same threat repeated right or should these missions feel like they're unique to you you know like how many times does this bunker need clearing or does it take another player doing the counter mission taking over the bunker to then require you to bring it back lawful you know like does it need to change hands it should be recyclable not just repeated each time i think and i think a lot of the content is turning out to be repeated you know it's like how many times is joe blow going to get stuck in this cave every time you know just stuff like that like it could get um more organic it could be a, a good example is salvaging like the wake of disaster mission a reclaimer is spawned out of nowhere it pulled they pull it out of a magic hat like a rabbit and then plunk, plunk it on the side of the system and people just go and salvage it but what could happen is when a large vessel, an 890 jump, a reclaimer, an address that is player owned gets destroyed, then it spawns wake of disaster tied to that. So it's like player actions. You're not just creating shipwrecks out of thin air, you know, like this could, it could all be interwoven and uh, interlinked and it's not. Uh, and I wish it was because yeah, it just, it, the game does feel very arcadey in that essence. It's like, they're just, things are magically appearing out of nowhere that make no sense. And they're very immersive breaking. I think it's, you know, not a hill I want to die on too heavily, but I definitely don't agree with that direction almost, you know, let me know what you guys think. Developers implementation of whatever the optimal yeah, flow yeah. is to earn gold. Based on existing games that set what I consider to be an incredibly low standard in this regard, this would probably take the form of grinding daily quests. Grind it's like, a, like a, here's a good example. The underground facilities, the large ones, the UGFs, they're going to have a raid inside of them. There's going to be a lower level and it's going to have a raid. Okay, they've announced that. That is coming. Does that mean... Every time you want to go to this UGF, you're going to kill this certain boss and he's going to have a chance of dropping good loot. And in end game content. Like, is that going to be every time? Like, because then we're starting to play World of Warcraft at that point. You know, like we're missing some of the systems, but it's getting very theme park, very arcadey, very quickly if they go this route. You know, and that's definitely a concern of mine. I like the idea of the villains being the players or like, and you can have you know story and you know bosses and stuff uh in the game but it shouldn't be you know everybody's killed this boss at this ugf and they did it to get this good gun then it's like yeah you're immediately on the content treadmill and uh the story's almost irrelevant it's not evolving you're just getting spoon fed every patch something new concerning what do you guys think and grinding resources to craft whatever materials and items make sense at max level and then selling them on some kind of in-game auction house. This whole process has been carefully audited like by the developer market. and they know within a reasonable range how long it will take you to earn that million gold you set out to acquire in the first place. They designed it. This is your maximum earning potential and it will take however many days, weeks or months the developers deem appropriate for their game for you to earn that million gold. To me, this is boring, this is done, and this is uninspired. Now, if you could kill another player in this hypothetical MMO and loot 500,000 gold pieces off their corpse, but it was incredibly risky and dangerous to do so, now you have my attention. Or yeah, which is like the economy, or in a you know, and SPVP progression said being in the player's hands, right? Like, what you're describing there, Void, like, for sure is like, them taking their hands off it but the problem is is the more theme park the game becomes the less unexpected things happen which reduces interest in the game and puts a lot of pressure on the developers to be constantly churning out new content for players to digest and the second they fall behind in that players start falling off this is the problem when you create like a pve mmo 
you're only as good as how you fast can- you can churn out content. But if you make a PvP MMO, and I'm not, this isn't a PvP versus PvE, I'm just saying, okay? If you make a MMO similar to EVE Online, which has plenty of PvE, okay? Plenty. But you make the content recyclable and dependent on each other, then it's, you, you're not in this development timeline where you're trying to maintain interest of your player base you give them the tools to make the story the gameplay themselves so yeah like to to your credit what you were describing if players need to haul millions worth of cargo as a risky investment to achieve something that could have a great result at the end you need to encourage players to do that but if it's a theme park i don't think it does that i think the theme park is holding your hand the whole time and you're in safe hands so they need to take away a bit of the leisure add some work to the game some meaningful logistics some required logistics yeah to create these like risk windows and stuff like that so I can. I'm concerned about the theme park aspect that he's describing. Like I really am. Let me know what you guys think. Take on an actually nearly impossible quest or discover an actually incredibly rare tradable item, you again have my attention. In yeah. one single task that wasn't a grind, you could be 50% closer to your 1 million gold goal. This is essentially- And this is the thing too. It's like for this to be what we get, we need loot, ship components, weapons, rare money, cargo to be able to change hands. And that's a great thing about the game right now is when you die, your loot can be looted. What you have on you can be looted. Should be more so the case with ships, but that's what allows for these stories to happen. The difference between a true sandbox and a theme park MMO. Yes. It's totally fine to have an effort versus reward ratio dictating every player's standard earning potential. But if players cannot influence this graph by yes. taking risks or getting creative, then it severely diminishes the potential a sandbox can reach. It doesn't yep. matter how good your missions are or how solid the gameplay loops are, because ultimately, if everything you do to progress in the game is a series of bland repetitive tasks set in bland repetitive content, it and I would argue that all the content we have right now is bland and repetitive like all of the missions are bland and repetitive they are the cool guys that are making them the missions are clever the content's there but there's no incentive no outcome no accumulation of power no reasoning like again we're spawning gigantic shipwrecks out of nothing to just spoon feed players there's no story to it you know becomes a bad grind. I am ultimately confident that CIG will get the numbers and balance right when it comes to progressing in Star Citizen, but hopefully progressing in Star Citizen is not just going to be about earning credits to buy bigger and quote unquote better ships. I've said this a lot before, but it's exciting and fun to consider that you could be a brand new player to the game, take some time learning the ropes, not have to play the game for some arbitrary amount of time to reach some level cap, and yet still find find yourself in a situation where you could take on some high risk gameplay and walk away with a meaningful reward by yep. breaking out of the predetermined graph of effort versus reward and leave the experience with some kind of meaningful progress. Star Citizen has, at least in my opinion, been able to demonstrate the possibilities of high risk, high reward gameplay throughout the game's endless development, from events like Jumptown to traders investing their life savings into one big haul. As we see the gameplay on offer advance with cargo features coming with the looming release of 3.24, I hope we get to see more forms of high risk, high reward gameplay. And yep. that our ludicrous space game doesn't become too tethered to this idea of earning potential being restricted to some kind of determined set rate by the developers. The yes. reasons for gr- Like hands off. Yeah, like the best thing these developers could do in an open world sandbox, especially in the space genre, is this repeat the success that EVE Online's had. And when I say that, don't get upset. I'm not talking about the ruthless PvP and toxic culture, nothing like that. I'm just saying you give players the, the tools to operate and make them depend on each other. You know, like the depend on each other for logistics, depend on players 
losing capital ships to create these insanely profitable salvaging missions stuff like this like let the community the player base you know interact so much more heavily than they are uh, rather than just having everybody getting spoon fed from the economy that is star citizen right now which is like oh here's some magical shipwrecks for the shipwreck uh for the salvaging player base oh here's some npcs you know that can be pirated for the pirating community uh here's some pirate npcs for the player community that want to do lawful content you know and it, it, it's like not in relation to anything that's happening it's just getting spawned in you know thin air so it's like when you when the more you are hands off but you provide the players with the tools to do so the better the game is um, for sure, in my opinion, yeah, in my opinion. Finding existing in the game need to be much more than just, we want people to play our game for the next 20 years. Players need a wide mix of potential reasons to engage with the grind in the first place. And if we're going to grind for the sole artificial reason of extending the game's life, hopefully the game will be fun enough to justify this intention, with enough content variety to keep it fresh, dynamic and interesting. At the end of the day, after you've finished whatever game you've chosen to invest hundreds or even thousands of hours was into no matter how grindy it was or wasn't all that we actually walk away with once everything is said and done are stories stories that we can t and stories don't happen if everything happens according to the script you don't get kotaku articles about how elite dangerous veterans are causing new players to mine uh, you know as slavery you know they're they're picking up these new players, warping them to remote systems that their warp drive or whatever doesn't have the fuel to escape and then forcing them into mining. Okay, that is hilarious. Okay, and that is like a unique story that happened when the players were given the tools to do so. That's what lands on Kotaku. All the hundred articles on Kotaku about EVE Online and this war and that war and this heist and this backstab, this red wedding, so to speak. This is what happens when the developers are more hands off and they just give players the universe to play within. And I worry that Star Citizen is trying to cater too much to this is exactly what Stanton is. Stanton has these reputations, it has these missions that always spawn here no matter what happens, it has these events, Orison is destined to get sieged four times a year, uh, Jericho is a station that only gets used when the Xeno threat decide to attack and they attack it the exact same way multiple times a year. Jumptown is the same drug lab that has been having wars fought over it for months and months and months. You know, like, it's got to be uh, more dynamic. It's got to be more immersive than this. And it doesn't need to be as on rails, yeah? As on rails as it currently is, I don't think. And uh, I worry that if they keep going down the theme park ride route, then Void Dude's very legitimate in his concern that if it's according to script, the script is boring, yeah? And then the script... Because it's boring when you're talking about playing it repetitively, then it starts to feel like a grind. Whereas if the game is unscripted and hands off and up to the interpretation of other players, the script is never the same. Every time you log in, it's different. And then it feels like less of a grind because your playing experience is unique. You know, like it's not... On rails, you know, the content should be, in my opinion, less on rails and up to interpretation. And to do that, you make the economy, players dependent on each other, make uh, some risk and reward, some p meaningful, powerful power accumulation and stuff like that. Tell ourselves or our Gosh, friends. we're rambling. Or we are fucking rambling. Our loved ones about of our experiences in a game that we had fun in. And I look forward yep. to telling you stories about as many of my experiences in our ludicrous space game as possible. Oh, it's there. There. damn it. Oh, man, that was cool. Hell yeah. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you. And is yeah, nice. Cool. Shout out to the guys supporting him. Fucking awesome. Yo, cool video, man. I enjoyed it. That was stimulating. It...
Doesn't happen enough. But that's a good video, man. I'm gonna have to watch this guy uh, often. Let me see if I can... Yo, Durgan, that's my old mate. Look at all these guys. I recognize these names. Uh, Crazy Eye Carl, I remember him. Recognize him. Cool, man. Um, but yeah, no, great video. Well done, Void, dude. Yeah. Here's to hoping the game is not as theme park as the direction it's taking. Hopefully it gets uh, more up to interpretation. Hopefully they develop an economy sooner than later um, and stuff like that. Guys, I enjoyed this. Yeah, uh, I will see you in the next video. Expect more. Yeah, and expect me to start mixing it up. If you got this far, give me a one, two, three in the comments, but give me more than that because apparently six words is what helps the algo. So I might have been kind of messing myself up with giving up you guys to one, two, three. So give me six words as well, whatever. But let me know what you guys think. Yeah, I'll be, uh, it's been a while since I've been able to go through comments on a video. So I'll try to reply to most of you. But guys, I appreciate you as always. Stay tuned for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.